I think there's something like 4,000 people have been arrested in England for thought crimes. So Joe Rogan is weighing in on how the UK government are using the riots to clamp down on free speech. Now stay to the end because I'm going to show you that it's actually a lot worse than you think because... A Christian teacher who was banned from teaching for misgendering a pupil has lost his high court battle to get his job back. We're going to talk about how we Christians can stay prepared. You're seeing it now in England where people are getting arrested for tweets. Yeah. Well, England, you know, people talk about Soviet Russia, like how bad uh, Russia is in terms of uh, cracking down on thought police and cracking down on bad tweets and things like that. I think the statistics are... I think England in the last, I think there's something like 4,000 people have been arrested in England for thought crimes where they've said things online that people find to be a, a hateful thing or a problematic thing. And I think it's only 200 in Russia. Oh, wow. Yeah. That says a lot. Yeah. Maybe in Russia they're too scared to do it at all. Could be. Yeah. But the fact that they're comfortable with, finding people who've said something that they disagree with and putting them in a cage in England in 2024 is really wild. Yeah. Especially they're, they're saying you can get arrested just for retweeting something. The, the offense of incitement to racial hatred involves uh, publishing or distributing material uh, which is uh, insulting uh, or abusive, which is intended to or likely to start racial hatred. So if you retweet that, then you're republishing that, and then potentially you're committing that offence. And we do have dedicated police officers who are scouring social media. Their job is to look for this material uh, and then follow up with uh, identification arrests and so forth. So it's a really, really serious. People might think they're not doing anything uh, harmful. They are, and the consequences will be visited upon them. And I'm literally going to show you an example of where that goes horribly wrong. But first, just hear Joe Rogan explain the problem with that thinking. Here's the problem with that. Even if you say, yeah, well, people shouldn't treat hateful, hateful things. I agree, they shouldn't. But who's to decide what is a hateful thing? That's the problem, it's That's subjective. the problem, it's very subjective. And, and it still shouldn't be a crime. And in our lifetime, we've seen that get moved, right? So it used to be, if a guy thought he was a woman, and his name was Doug, and you grew up with Doug, and all of a sudden, Doug wants to be called Debbie. If you call him Doug, it's no big deal. Like, yeah, maybe you're being rude to call him Doug, but it's not a hate crime, right. okay? Well, now a lot of people think it's a hate crime, and that, that got you banned from Twitter for life. So if you dead name someone on the old Twitter, you are banned for life. Dead name, not even making up a name. You can call him an idiot. You can call someone an idiot, okay? <laughs> Forget about a man in a dress. Maybe that's a problem. But if you call, like, a regular guy an idiot, you stupid f Fine, no problem. But if you call Doug, Doug, you will get banned for life. Okay, that's the new hate speech. That's crazy. Now, if that keeps going, that didn't exist before, if that keeps going, maybe you can go to jail for calling him Doug. Maybe they think it's okay to put you in jail because you violated their hate speech laws. Now, people will rightfully point out that in the case of the UK riots, there were people who were saying, tweeting that you should burn down mosques or that you should attack hotels with asylum seekers in there. And people actually went, and tried to do those things. So they would say, you need these laws to prevent incitement to violence. The problem is when you try and go further than incitement to violence to talking about insulting or perceived hatred, because how can you put the role of judging the heart in the hands of imperfect people? For example, if I say to a Muslim guy who happens to be from Pakistan, I think, for, I think Muhammad is a false prophet and that you should turn to Jesus for forgiveness for your sins. Am I saying that because I hate that person? Well, I'm saying it because I want them to experience eternal life. But somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus and isn't surrendered to him will come and see that as hateful because I'm trying to erase their identity or disrespect their religion. Even worse, things that all of us, whether Christian or not, used to accept as fact are now being seen as hateful. This is a perfect example. Christian teacher who was banned from teaching for misgendering a pupil has lost his high court battle to get his job back. 34-year-old maths teacher Joshua Sutcliffe was banned from the classroom last year after being found guilty of, quote, unacceptable professional conduct. This involved him saying, well done, girls, to two children, one of whom was a girl that's identified as a male. 
And despite launching a legal appeal, the judge has now concluded that Mr Sutcliffe, quote, fails to understand or accept the harm that he caused vulnerable children in his class by refusing to use their preferred pronouns and upheld his ban from British classrooms. I'm joined now by the man himself, Joshua Sutcliffe. Joshua, so this is a, a very, it's getting very convoluted. You've been to court and you're going to go to the Court of Appeal again. Just take us back to what happened in class. You refused to use a, a child's pronouns. Why didn't you just go along with it? Well, I think my Christian convictions, um, you know, um, led me to not use pronouns at all. I just thought an, a, a sensible approach would be to just not use pronouns. Um, but as you read in your opening statement, um, that wasn't um, good enough. And the judge, I think, has made an egregious decision. Uh, I think he showed zero understanding of my Article 9 and Article 10 rights. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, I thought it was a bit of a pantomime court, in, in all honesty. Um, uh, I was instructed, as you, as you read there, um, that I should have celebrated the pupil's trans transition. And I am clearly not a believer in um, leading children down a path of uh, mutilation and, and down a dangerous path of taking strong drugs, drugs and so on. So um, I stand by my convictions and I'm hoping, uh, you know, this, this I believe is a really important case for our nation because mm. um, it, obviously I have quite strong Christian convictions, but this is probably a more universal belief that we shouldn't be leading young people down this dangerous path. And that is what the um, principle um, uh, argument in the court was. So I just want to get this straight because I want to make sure that I'm not hateful or insulting. So if I celebrate a child for how God has made them as a girl, that's hateful. But if I lie to them by saying that they're a boy and I'm willing to medicate them and destroy their body in order to maintain that lie, that's loving. Except that's not love at all. The Bible tells us exactly what love is. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. Does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. So what we're seeing here is a generation of people who have rejected God. And obviously that's a problem because God is love. And so when they try and define love and hate, they're going to miss the mark. And there's so much evil that's being done in the name of of love and that's why you have to be prepared because it is coming to a town near you you think that if you just keep silent and don't post stuff on social media and everything it's all good well as you heard in that decision he did not celebrate so it's not just about acceptance but rather unless you bow the knee you are next well i bow the knee to no one but jesus and one day every knee will bow and every time will confess that he is lord so there are three things i think we need to do first is go to joshua sutcliffe's page and if you can support him because praise the lord he stood up for christ even though it cost him his job the second thing is stack up three to six months worth of savings i'm telling you the last thing you want to be is in a position where you feel like you need to choose between feeding your family and standing up for christ so let's be saving the last thing is pray like crazy that God would help you stand in that moment and that you would remember that even if this world crumbles you lose your job you lose your house you lose anything words cannot even describe and one more thing if you want to be even more prepared and know what's going on check out this video I'll see you in the next one peace and blessings